This video will guide you through setting up the NQ Series IO-Link master modules we offer at Keyence. We'll walk through setting up an IP address, configuring the unit using our computer application, and connecting to a Rockwell PLC via Ethernet IP so that we can see all of the IO-Link information from sensors connected to the NQ MP8L or the NQ EP4L. The first thing to do when setting up a new NQ module is to establish an IP address on the unit. I'll use the IP setting tool, which can be downloaded from keyins.com for free. My computer and the NQ module are connected to the same Ethernet switch, so I should see the NQ module populate automatically. From this screen, I can also search for any devices connected to the same subnetwork as my computer's Ethernet adapter. To establish an IP address on the NQ module, I want to make sure I have the correct row selected and select Setup IP Address. I'll enter the address I'm going to use and make sure Start with Fixed IP is selected so I don't lose the IP address after I power off the NQ. Once finished, I can confirm the IP address was successfully established on the NQ in the main screen. If you didn't see the NQ module populate in the IP setting tool, I recommend checking your firewall settings. Often the IP setting tool needs to be granted permission through the firewall on your computer. Enter the control panel, then select Windows Defender Firewall, then select Allow an app through firewall. Look for the IP setting tool in the list that appears. If you cannot find the application, you'll need to add it to the list. Once you have located the IP setting tool, make sure all the boxes available are checked and accept any changes. Now when you open IP setting tool again, you should see the NQ populate. If you're still having trouble, check with your company to see if there are any further firewalls to consider. Once I've got an IP address established, I'll start the NQ Sensor Monitor software and open a new file. I'll click Yes to connect to a new NQ and search for the IP address I just set on the unit. In the Network Settings menu, I can select which NQ module I want to configure, which is useful when I've got multiple modules connected in the same network. In the Port Setting menu, I can configure the operation that each port is performing, along with some extra functions like data storage modes that back up IO-Link sensor data and sensor validation settings for each port. Any Keyence IO-Link devices will automatically appear when connected to the NQ, but any third-party IO-Link sensors can be added by uploading the IODD file of that sensor to the software. In the device setting menu, we can monitor the process data that cyclically updates between the sensor and the NQ. Additionally, we can remotely configure an IO-Link device by entering the parameter settings. Here we can change settings on the device or issue commands such as tuning or initialization using the IO-Link service data. Once you've got a device configured, you can easily copy the settings from that device's port and paste the settings to another port, allowing the ability to set up IO-Link sensors in large batches. I've got a fresh Studio 5000 program open, and I'm going to start by adding the EDS file for the NQ to the PLC software. Once this is done, I can create a new module and search for the NQ model being used. I'll give it a name and the correct IP address. And before I make the module, I want to change two of the module settings to avoid any issues down the road. I'm going to select a process data sizing of 32 in and 32 out, and I'm going to change the module data type to integer. Once I've made the changes, I'll press OK and create my module.
With the module tags that were created, I can see the implicit messaging data between the NQ and the PLC. Although I can see the data, it isn't labeled, so I would need to use the NQ user's manual to figure out where within that input data to find the information I want, like the current value on an LRZ distance sensor. To organize and label the data, I recommend using our add-on instructions, which automatically sort IO-Link process data into individual tags for each port. To use our process data AOI, I need to import it from my computer. Once this is done, I can drag and drop the AOI into my main routine. I need to create new variables for each field of the AOI, except for the input data and output data, which will use the existing input and output tags from the NQ module. I want to be doubly sure I'm using the dot data tag for these two, otherwise the AOI will not work. Once this is done, I can finish making tags for each individual port on the NQ. Now that I'm done making tags, I'll go online and monitor port 5's data, which is where the LRZ is connected, and I'll make sure the value in the PLC's input data tag matches the value in the NQ software. Now is a good time to note that if a sensor's process data completely occupies a whole integer, like the LRZ's current process data structure, we will not need to move any bits around for the information to make sense. However, there are situations where the data only occupies part of an integer, in which case I'll need to move those bits around into their own separate integer for the information to make sense. I typically use BTD instructions to accomplish this. The instruction will move the 12 bits of distance information, starting at bit 4, into a new separate integer. Once this is done, the distance reading in the PLC matches up with the reading in the NQ software again. Alternatively, there are cases where the information, such as the amount of air that's gone through an FDG flow sensor, occupies multiple integers of data. In this case, I need to combine multiple integers into one double integer for the information to make sense. A useful tool is the process data setting in the port tab of the NQ software, which I would set to 32-bit conversion since I'm looking for data that takes up 32 bits. The process data automatically swaps the position of bytes to compensate for any differences in endianness between the PLC and the NQ. Now that I've combined my two integers into a double integer, I can see the correct accumulated flow of the FDG in my PLC. So far, we've covered implicit messaging, which updates cyclically between the NQ and the PLC, but there is more information that can be accessed via explicit messaging, which is a one-time message that requires a trigger. Explicit messaging is used to access IO-Link service data, which allows reading and writing of the sensor settings and execution of commands such as tuning. An example where I'd want to send a write request to a parameter is to reset the accumulation of airflow on a flow meter. I've still got the FDG connected to port 1, and we can see that the accumulated flow is quite large. If I want to reset this value back to 0, there are two ways to go about it. I can toggle the digital output from the NQ if applicable to that port and acceptable by the connected sensor, or I can send a command via IO-Link service data. If I want to reset the integrated flow via toggling the digital output of port 1, I need to make sure that the digital output is enabled via the port settings and the IO-Link sensor knows what to do with that output 
via accessing the parameters in the device settings. Once this is done, I need to open the port 1 tags and pulse the digital output bit on and off. When I check the FDG accumulated flow, we can see that it was forced to reset. The other way to do this is by using our add-on instruction for writing messages to the NQ. I'll start by importing the write AOI and add it into my main routine. I'll need to create new tags for each field of the instructions. Personally, I've noticed there are a few tags I never touch, so I start those with the letter Z to remind myself. The important fields here are the REQ tag, which is just a boolean I need to toggle to initiate the message, and the write data tag, which is where I can specify the contents of a message or command that I'm giving to my IOLink sensor. The port number field lets me specify to which port on the NQ to direct my message. The IOLink index field lets us select which parameter of an IOLink sensor to adjust via service data. The full list of parameters available can be found in the IOLink instruction manual for that sensor. For example, I've got the FDG parameters pulled up now, and we can see that I need to use index 104 to reset the integrated flow. For key int sensors, which do not have sub-indices, I will always leave the sub-index field as zero. Lastly, the swap mode field will always be one unless you're using a parameter with a byte length larger than two. This setting accounts for a difference in endiness between the NQ and the PLC. After all the AOI fields are filled out, we need to click on the bottom ellipses to set up the AOI itself. For writing a message, the service code will always be 4C and the class will always be 85. The instance and attribute should be filled out with a 1. For our source and destination elements, we want to select the tag that we created for the write data field in the AOI earlier. Lastly, we need to enter the communication tab and set up the path to the NQ that we want to use the AOI on. After all this, we can click apply and exit out. We'll need a way to toggle our write request bit, so I'll set up a simple rung to do this. Afterwards, the last thing I need to do is navigate to my tags and edit the write data tag. First, as we can see from the FDG manual, I need to write a value of zero to reset the accumulated flow on an FDG. Secondly, I need to fill out the data length in bytes of this message, which is described as two bytes long in the manual. Please note that recording the incorrect length here will cause an error with the AOI. After these changes are made, I can test the instruction to see if it works. In addition to writing a parameter, we can also read from a parameter. Let's say for example that I want to check on the internal piping pressure I set the FDG airflow meter to. I can send a read message to the correct parameter and obtain this value. We've got an add-on instruction for reading IOLink parameters via service data. So I'll import these AOI and add it to my main routine. Looking at it briefly, it should look really similar to the right AOI we used just before. I'll keep on naming unused tags with a Z at the start, otherwise I'll make new tags for each field as normal. I'm still gonna use port one to target my FDG, and I want to enter index 224 to read the internal piping pressure while leaving the subindex at zero. Lastly, I'll set my swap mode to one since the value is still only two bytes long. I'll click on the bottom ellipses to set up the AOI itself, entering 4B for the service code, 85 for the class, and one for both the instance and attribute fields. For the source and destination, I'll choose the tag from the read data field we created on the AOI. Next, I'll head over to the communication tab and set the path for the AOI back to the correct NQ module. After this is done, I can apply the settings and then set up my rung that toggles the request bit to initiate the read message. Now I can head over to my tags and adjust the read data tag. 
My length tag needs to be set to the correct length of the parameter I'm reading. Once I've got this, I can go ahead and test my read message. I should receive a value of 70 PSI whenever I send this message.